This is Ham Radio Now, episode 390, Huntsville Ham Fest, here at the Orlando Hamcation. On Ham Radio Now, the most important amateur radio program on the internet. I'm Gary Pierce, scan 4 aq Always got to say, Ham Radio Now brought to you by you. If you enjoy the program, get something out of it, free to make. No, free to watch, not free to make. <coughs> so stop by hamradionow.tv, click the pig, and uh, help me keep doing the program. Well, help David keep doing the program, because as you know, I'm going to stop doing the program pretty soon. So uh, Huntsville Ham Fest, and here's another guy who just stopped by the booth. It is uh, Mark Brown. No, I can't see your call. Uh, w N4... And for BCD, well, if I put up your title, then I can tell what it there is. There we go. The new-ish, I guess, general chairman, or just chairman, of the Huntsville Ham Fest. That's right, Gary. And, and someone told you to come over here. <laughs> Actually, I, I ran into Michael Calder from, uh, from Dayton. We've been uh, crossing paths several times this, uh, this weekend here in Orlando. And he mentioned uh, that uh, it's good PR to, uh, to mention our show on, uh, on your program. So here I am. Yep. Uh, so Huntsville Ham Fest is obviously in Huntsville, and it is in August. Huntsville, Alabama. There's a lot okay. of Huntsville. So Huntsville, Texas, we're not there. Okay. Huntsville, Huntsville Alabama. Alabama. Yeah. It's in August. It's an outdoor flea market. So bring it Indoor. Indoor. I, I know. I've been there. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> okay. I've done shows. I am just trying to yank your chain. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, Gary. Uh, we have, uh, we have a, a really facility. neat facility. Yeah. It's the Von Braun Civic Center. I, I, I can't remember when it, uh, when it was opened, but uh, we take up the entire South Hall of the Von Braun Center. It's all, uh, even the uh, flea market area is, uh, is indoors and air conditioned. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, we have a connected hotel over a, a causeway to the, uh, to the Embassy Suites, a very comfortable stay over there. If folks uh, want get, to get a reservation into there, recommend they do it early. A couple of other hotels in the area, but uh, we get a good crowd and uh, a lot of fun. Um, so in, in the pecking order of ham fests, there's um, Dayton, which is going to be the biggest one. And here at Orlando is arguably, I think, easily in the number two position. And the last time I, I was at Huntsville and I talked to Charlie, the, the former chairman who passed away a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering who might be in number three. And is, you know, did, uh, did Huntsville is in contention for number three? What are your attendance figures we these think, days? We think we're around number three, six to seven, maybe 8,000. It varies by year. Uh, we were... We had uh, the impact of the uh, the eclipse, uh, the total total solar <laughs> eclipse last year. Did that eclipse the ham fest. It did. Uh, it it changed the travel plans of a lot of vendors. Because you weren't in the uh, path of totality. Uh, Joe, no, we weren't. But we <laughs> were. We were in the only path an of hour and a half away. <laughs> If you'd been in the path of totality, it would have been, would have probably boosted things. It, it may have, but uh, a lot of uh, a lot of vendors made their travel plans contingent uh, or uh, supplementing the uh, they were going to leave our, our ham fest on Sunday and go travel somewhere up into the path of totality. Uh, personally, I left my home in Fayetteville, Tennessee, the next morning, uh, drove an hour and a half, and uh, and witnessed just an awesome, incredible event. So uh, it, it did change things a little bit uh, for our Sunday attendance. But, uh, yeah, but 7,000 7, average, uh, maybe eight. We're looking to grow and, uh, and keep yeah, things I've, relevant. I've been for a saying lot of like 5,000 or so, which is probably what it was four or five years ago. Uh, it was more than that. Okay. Yeah. So. I don't have the numbers with me off the top of my head, but uh, the guys that have been doing this for man decades <laughs> uh, probably have a better, uh, better number, a better handle on what those, what those figures are. All right. So it is. Um, a uh, it's like like this in that you've got an exhibit hall area with pipes and drapes and you know fancy stuff for the for the commercial vendors exactly and then typical flea market tables but it's all in one big room it's all in one huge room I don't know the square footage but uh, we have the capability if we need to if we if we even gain the attendance and gain additional vendors uh, flea market folks we can we can actually occupy some more space but we don't want to make it cavernous that you've got to walk 100 miles to, uh, to go see just one more thing. <laughs> yeah. So it, we'll, we'll control the growth, but uh, keep things uh, compact. And you get all the major vendors. Absolutely. Um, you name them. Uh, Flex, yeah. Yesu, Icom, Kenwood, uh, RT Systems Software. Elecraft. Elecraft. Step IR, they're looking at coming, coming back. They, they were not there the, uh, last year, but they, they're looking at coming back this year. Uh, Gigaparts, uh, HRO. Uh, Gigaparts is your local. Gigaparts is store. our local candy store. Yes, 
we uh, we and, like having them in town. And, and what I've been no- I forgot to switch your camera on. What I've been noticing is uh, the, the years that I've been there is that they bring like ninety percent of the store inventory and set up a store inside. They they literally bring a, a store within a store. That's there. There's a lot of inventory they bring. Uh, they didn't bring as much uh, because of the travel distance here to uh, to Orlando. I didn't see I much inventory here at all. But I recognize the guys that are working it, yeah. and uh, they have some outside experts for the uh, for the Anon uh, Apache Labs radios that uh, they don't have there in the store. So they uh, they bring in some outside help to uh, to assist with that kind of stuff. Okay, so the Von Braun Center is nice at all. But it appears that the trend in Hamfest is to go to fairgrounds. So, so you're planning on moving to the uh, county fairgrounds outside of Huntsville? He does not answer that. I don't that. think so. <laughs> uh, I cannot imagine an outdoor ham fest in Alabama in August. No, I don't think so. That, would be, uh, uh, that would be a painful endeavor. Uh, having the air-conditioned facility, uh, we, we, uh, we literally uh, have uh, our vendors and flea market folks drive in the roll-up doors of the South Hall. Uh, they, they open their car doors, and after registration, uh, a team of volunteers from the Huntsville Amateur Radio Club assist with carts and uh, and pallet jacks and whatever to uh, to move the uh, to move the vendors, move the flea market guys to their tables, and then the, the cars proceed out another roll up door. So it's a very convenient uh, uh, situation logistic wise for uh, for all the folks coming to the uh, to to the event that are bringing hardware, especially. Uh, the guys bringing trailers uh, of boat anchors for the flea market. Uh, if you're if you're one of the Hamfest volunteers that uh, that draws that card, uh, your back will feel it. Yeah, uh, and I have set up there, and I got lots of help. Um, and it, you know, the, the volunteers that you've got there are very uh, enthusiastic, and and you know they know their jobs and they uh, they dig in. Right now, I do have to say something uh, while you're here because I say it whenever I talk about the Hamfest on mm-hmm. on the show, and I, and I talk about it a fair amount. And that is that it is a beautiful, a beautiful facility. It is air conditioned. And by the way, in, in this building here on Sunday, the air conditioning is working. You got lucky. On Friday and Saturday, it was not working. I was in here yesterday. Yeah, it we, was a bit we, warm. You were, you were doing a, a YL interview, and I didn't yeah. stop by. Yeah, we were sweltering during that. We were all yeah. glowing. <laughs> so um, it's, it's all beautiful. But what I always say is then you got the flea market, which is about maybe three quarters of the, the space on the floor on typical flea market tables and the hams come in and they trash the place they, they make it look like a ham fest it uh it does look uh, a little different uh following uh the move out on sunday well but even not, even while they're not, there you know it's, it's not just, terrible it's just it's hams looking like hams with all their, their their junk on the tables at a ham fest which you know it i i don't know gary i, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't i don't know it, if i would call it junk those are those are <laughs> treasures yeah those are treasures, okay. uh, and and some of the stuff that you know that won't fit on their tables, they have underneath the tables, and uh, sometimes that's where the best bargains are, underneath because it, they they kind of forgot about that. So it could be, but what I'm thinking is that like Werner von Braun is he may not be spinning in his grave or even rolling, but he's probably kind of itching and you know, a little uncomfortable. He's saying, "What did they do to my place?" I I, I would have to think that a tech a technical person like von Braun obviously was he may uh he may appreciate the fact that people are trading electronics and batteries and leds and and all the all the new stuff that makes up our hobby so it may be more like uh so this this is what i will what i this what is I what I, this is why i wish i was still yeah. alive <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, all, the rest know? of the rest of the facility is nice and all but uh, the hams they have the understanding we, we have the stuff okay good deal um, and what is the exact dates this year? We, uh, we have uh, August 8th. I'm referring to my notes because I don't want to get it wrong. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, August 18 and 19. We do the uh, move in all day on Friday, I think up until about 8 o'clock, and we close the doors. And uh, up until uh, from 7 o'clock until 9 o'clock on Saturday morning for folks to finish their setup. But then all day Saturday and Sunday, I think we close around, I think our final drawing is at 3 o'clock on, uh, on Sunday. <coughs> So, well, I was kidding about everybody moving to uh, fairgrounds. Um, what mm-hmm. I'm not kidding about is that there has been a, uh, a move by some ham fest that did two days, Saturday and Sunday, and mm-hmm. they looked at Sunday and said, it's not very busy. And we look at the stuff behind you here uh, in Orlando on Sunday. There's some vendors that have moved out. Some of the, the tables in the middle are empty, and the traffic is not nearly what it was yesterday. Orlando moved to uh, fr- all day Friday. Mm-hmm. And then sa- all day Saturday, and then the half day on Sunday, right? Um, and a few other ham fests have 
closed their Sunday entirely and have decided to open Friday afternoon or Friday evening as a, a, a day that is going to be busier than what Sunday ever was. Now, Sunday at, or, at, at Huntsville is not dead, but it is n- not nearly what Saturday is. Have what? you ever thought about moving in Friday? We have, we have uh, we've discussed the, the, the possibility. Uh, we looked at, at different options. We, we were obviously looking and, and talking with our vendors and flea, uh, flea market regulars, the guys that rent a huge number of spaces. We're not, we're not contemplating any change right now, but it's something that, that we may think about down the road. But right now, the, uh, the Saturday-Sunday format is working for us. We want, one of the things we want to do, though, is make Sunday more relevant, uh, maybe with some interesting and varied content that, that's not available on Saturday. Uh, but okay, so but you're yet, thinking about doing something that, that would make Sunday better. We want to we want to keep it relevant. We want to because it, it's a it's a win win situation or a downward spiral. If the vendors stop coming, the, then the attendance would drop off. If the attendance drops off, then maybe the vendors won't come. But if if we can get more vendors in, or more uh, more visitors on Sunday, then the vendors will be more inclined to stick around. We know it's 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 tough, but but Huntsville is a a uh, a very busy two day event. Orlando and Dayton, of course, are three days, but we want to make it make the best of the two days that we have uh, where we have the doors open for business and we're looking forward to that. Well, Friday is an iffy situation um, because people work on Fridays. Absolutely. The volunteer base, uh, there's so many logistical issues to think about for changing an event from from a, a pair a Saturday Sunday to a Friday Saturday. Yeah, because that moves your setup to Thursday. Yes, and, so and our now volu- your volunteers have to take our another volunteers day off. with the Huntsville Amateur Radio Club. Uh, we get about a hundred or so, maybe maybe a little more than that, out of the Huntsville Radio Club that uh, that help with various uh, volunteer uh, hospitality, uh, security things like that. That's a that's a huge base that uh, that we rely on, and we'll have to uh, we'll have to you know keep looking at things. We want to. We review after uh, each ham fest, and uh, by the way, I'm, I'm new to the Huntsville Ham Fest committee. Uh, I was a past officer for several Huntsville clubs, but with Charlie's passing, the guys that have man decades of experience, uh, based on my I don't know what, they asked me to to, to fill this role. Because <laughs> oh, they knew uh, how hard it was Char- going to be, and they, Charlie, knew they didn't want it. Charlie, uh, all the vendors here, uh, they knew Charlie. They they he was a, a wonderful soul, and. Uh, I will not replace Charlie. I will try to do his job. Yeah. So uh, I'll grow into the role, but we've got guys with man decades of experience handling the uh, the flea market arrangements and the you know the dealer uh, layout things like that. So uh, we really count on each other to uh, to make sure things work out well. So do you have a succession plan in place for the for the next guy? <laughs> From what I heard, uh, it's when I die that somebody else will figure out. Who to replace me with? I'm, yeah, I'm afraid that's kind that, of the way things work in this business. And that's yeah. That, well, I mean, the, literally the way it worked at Huntsville. That's exactly right. Gary. And Charlie had been chairman for forever. Uh, quite a while. I don't know the number of years, but uh, I'll, I'll grow into the role. Yeah, I got a feeling it was one of those things where there was a line of people standing there, and they said, "Would a volunteer please step forward?" And everyone else stepped back, and you didn't know to do that. Actually, I, I knew the guys that were on the committee. I've known them for a number of years, and uh, when when I heard of Charlie's passing, I, I wrote a simple two line note. I said, "What can I do to help?" And uh, at the time, <laughs> I didn't realize what that what that would lead to. Yeah. <laughs> so, are you employed full time, or are you retired? Yes, I work at a small startup uh, in Huntsville with a couple of other active hams. Uh, our our COO is a uh, is our AWRL card checker. Uh, my boss, my immediate supervisor, is a uh, AWRL technical staff person, and a technical advisor. I think is the proper title. And so uh, they. They understand my time commitment. Uh, they didn't have any problem whatsoever with me taking a couple of days off to come down here and do the PR thing for uh, for Huntsville. And when Dayton comes up here in a couple of months, I'll be doing the same thing. Of course, they go to Dayton, too. And I've sent a picture so from down here. So they just close the company and go to Dayton. <laughs> we do close the company. <laughs> no, no. And we, probably, uh, uh, probably at uh, the Huntsville weekend, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're all busy that weekend. What's the company do? We're, we're at... Uh, we're a small startup where we're doing uh, radio location in in GPS denied environments. It's called QTrack, Q-T-R-A-C-K, QTrack. And uh, what we do is take advantage of the near field properties of of medium wave and long uh, broadcast band and three megahertz uh, uh, signals, RF signals, 
that uh, in the near field, they don't behave like they do in the far field. They, they decay at a di uh, power of six instead of the power of three. And uh, we take advantage of that by using these tags or small transmitters to put on people or high value assets. And with our, with our ultra sensitive receivers mounted up on walls and connected together via uh, ethernet or wireless, uh, we have a location server that basically draws a person or a dot on a map and to, uh, to locate that person in, a, like I said, a GPS denied environment such as a big uh, a nuclear plant or uh, a warehouse that doesn't have GPS capabilities. Okay, so that indoors enough that you can't see the satellites, I guess. Absolutely. And so, like I said, we're all ham radio guys and, <laughs> and we, 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 we work at what we play. Yeah, so that, I mean that sounds like a super niche, but it's it sounds like one that's, that you're feeling a, a need. It's definitely filling a need. Yeah. Okay, and and this you're not doing retail to the public, so you, so you can take a day off now and then. Yes, and <laughs> that's and, uh, and do ham fest stuff. It's it's a nice uh, it's a nice perk. Yes. Yeah, and mm -hmm. they're all ham, so they understand. Sure. None of the, the companies I work for generally not. Uh, run by hams. There'd be a few hams there, but when I wanted to go do some ham radio stuff, it was like uh, we got an edit for you to do here, Gary. You got to stay. It, it's <clears throat> excuse me. It's one of the interesting things where we found. Uh, <clears throat> I was with my my boss and his boss, uh, the two guys I mentioned, in uh, in Dayton a couple of years ago, and uh, in one of the tents outside, we found this thing, and we call it the Faraday lunchbox, and uh, literally, it's a uh, it's an oversized lunchbox that, that a guy would carry to work but it's corrugated aluminum and we have actually found a use for that in our in our work where if our if our our transmitting tags we put them inside this aluminum this faraday lunchbox and they go deaf or if we put a receiver inside we can't hear it it really works and we found this thing as just a flea market item uh, in <laughs> Dayton. So it's just an advan it's just an example of you never know what you're going to find at these flea markets. Uh, it, it was a neat thing, and we're having fun with it. All right. Is there anything else about the Huntsville Ham Fest <clears throat> that people out there desperately need to know before we let you go? Well, we're, we're known, <clears throat> as, as many vendors here will mention, we're the, hunt, the, the world's friendliest ham fest. We, we take care of our vendors. We want to greet people. We want to make them comfortable, not just the vendors, but the, uh, the visitors. And we enjoy that. We enjoy having everybody there. We have a DX banquet on, uh, on Saturday night. And uh, last year we had Bob Alfin talking about the uh, the challenges and adventures of Bouvet Island. <laughs> oh boy, of course did they have we a know, challenge and adventure. Of course we know where Bob is right now. He's on a slow boat to South Africa. Yeah. I haven't heard an update. I, the last I heard that uh, they were dispatching a tug to assist the uh, the stricken ship. Oh, wow. And, uh, it was worse it's, than it's, I thought. It's, it's not good. I talked to Lou, N2TU, yesterday, and along with uh, one of the Indexa guys. And as far as I know, there's been no other updates since... Uh, uh, 2200 Zulu, I think two days ago. So uh, yeah, that's that's quite a thing. But anyway, back to the banquet. Uh, we're getting upwards of 100 people. Uh, we've been so successful in growing that event that we're going to have to move to a new venue, a, a larger uh, a hotel. And uh, so it, it's always a nice time. Good food, good camaraderie. Uh, last year we've had uh, we've had great door prizes and FTDX 1200. I don't know what we're going to have this year, but uh, major event and uh, just like. Uh, just like Dayton or Orlando, we're getting a, a significant percentage of the population that attend the uh, the ham fest uh, joining us at the banquet in the evening. There's um, at least one other, maybe several other associated uh, events, or at least events that take advantage of going on at the same time. The, the QRP mm -hmm. folks do something around that weekend? Yes, they do. Uh, they have uh, uh, something, a QRP on the mountain. Uh, there's a uh, Montesano Mountain just outside. Or it's, it's literally part of Huntsville. But it's a, it's a high elevation. They have a state campground up there. And the QRP folks uh, traditionally uh, rent a bunch of cabins up there, string wires and trees, uh, have a barbecue. And so there's a lot of activity centered around that. Good deal. So the Huntsville Ham Fest, August 18th and 19th, Saturday and Sunday. Yes, Gary. Huntsville, Alabama. Right. Which is, uh, you know, you think of Alabama as, as a rural state, but Huntsville is a high tech. You know, it's the, you've got NASA and... We have more uh, hams in uh, in Madison, Alabama, than some entire states. It's uh, it's a very popular community. We have the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. Uh, I had, uh, like I said, I had dinner with some of the league folks last night. They brought their wives here to Orlando, uh, but uh, wives are also welcome in Huntsville. There's there's a lot to do there. There's the U.S. Space and Rocket Center for kids. Uh, 
any, for uh, a lot of folks. It's, there's, there's a lot to do besides the ham fest. Okay, thank you very much, Mark Brown, N4BCD chairman now of the Huntsville Ham Fest. And uh, let's see, pushing okay, thank all you, the Gary. right buttons here. I am Gary Pierce, KN4AQ. That is it for this episode of Ham Radio Now. Always got to do the fundraising. Ham Radio Now is brought to you by you if you enjoy the program and get something out of it. HamRadioNow.tv is the place to go. From the Orlando Hamcation, we are live, and I am pushing the buttons to turn things off. See you later. One more button.